woman of the Lord. God is so good and he's so faithful. The woman of God is about to bring the word of God and we want to have our expectancy out there. We want to create an atmosphere where it's easy. We know she's going to preach no matter what. But we want to be receptive and we're ready to receive. So it's nothing any better than to be standing up here and seeing happy, smiling faces that are ready to receive the word of God. It makes preaching easier. It makes you receiving easier because we're expecting God to do some great things for us. Now, yesterday, we uh, found out it don't even matter and you got to have bulldog faith. Bishop Sheldon Mandel McCarter. We thank God for granting us a pastor and a leader who is so anointed that he's in high demand. Amen. Help me thank God for co-pastor Joyce McCarter, her anointed power, prophetic self, none other. Amen. Let's go to the word of God on tonight. If you will go with me to Ezekiel chapter 16, looking at verse 6, just one verse of scripture. Ezekiel 16, verse number 6. And the word of the Lord declares, And when I passed by thee and saw thee struggling in thy own blood, I said unto thee, When thou was in thy blood, live. Let me read that again. And when I passed by thee and saw thee struggling, somebody say struggling. In thy own blood, I said unto thee, when thy was in thy blood, live. Real quick, I want you to look to your neighbor and just tell them my topic. I will survive. Now turn around and look at your neighbor on the other side and tell them, I will survive. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now that you have been uh, informed as of yesterday by Elder Toma that whatever you go through really don't matter. And then Elder Paulette came back and told you if you got bulldog faith. So on tonight, I'm just coming to add a little icing to the cake to tell you that you will survive. I know we've all been through enough things to make us cry, enough things to make us want to throw in the towel and quit. But the good news is on tonight that the Lord sees us in our I will struggle. The truth of the matter is many of us who have gathered here at the Monday Night Live, you're saved, you're sanctified, you're Holy Ghost fear, fire baptized, you got Jesus on your side and you're running for your life. But there are times you want to run for the border because you're going through a struggle. So can we just be honest on tonight that some of us have experienced circumstances, situations, and things that somewhat threw us off course, that we somewhat lost our grip because we were in a, a struggle. Many of you are sitting here on tonight, you're in an emotional struggle, a financial struggle, perhaps a family struggle that you don't really know what to do, but you know how to put the face on and come on up in here and get your praise on. But on tonight, the Lord has assigned me to speak life into somebody's struggle, into somebody's situation to let you know that you shall survive. On tonight, some of you have gotten weary waiting on the promises of God because what you're experiencing don't line up with what you've been expecting. You've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been giving, and you're still coming up empty. But on tonight, good God Almighty, the Lord wants you to be encouraged.
courage to be bold and courageous to let the devil know I will survive. Some of you been walking the floor night after night wondering how the bills is going to be paid. You're in a struggle. Some of you been wondering when in the world is the Lord is going to come through for me. I see him blessed Sister Applejack and Brother Cornflake. But when is going to be my time? Don't you give up the towel. You will survive. Some of you been crying. You been praying. But I dare you to look up and tell the devil I cried my last tear yesterday. I had enough heartache. Enough headache. I had some mountains to climb. But I will survive. Because the truth is in our struggle at times we wonder, God, what's up? Does anybody see me in this struggle? God, do you hear me when I cry? Do you hear me when I call out unto you? It don't mean you ain't saved, but when we really keep it real and be honest, we all have gotten to that place that you want to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But I come to announce on tonight that the God that we serve, he hears all, he sees all, and he knows all. I said he hears all, he sees all, and he knows all. He hears all, he sees all, and he knows all. So just because you you don't see him working right now don't mean he ain't on your assignment so just in case you didn't know God specializes in working in the dark it was in the dark in Genesis that he spoke a word and who dead is so even if you're in the dark on the night the word of God will eradicate darkness didn't the word say he'll order your steps he sees he hears and he knows as evidenced by our text on tonight. Ezekiel 16, he say, when I pass by you, Brother June, when I pass by you, Sister Angie, when I pass by you, I couldn't just walk by and act like I didn't see you. When I pass by you, I couldn't look over your knee because it's just about me and my foe. And no more. He said, when I passed by you, I saw you struggling in your own blood. I saw you struggling in your private storm that you couldn't tell nobody about. I saw you struggling in your faith. I saw you struggling in your finances. And he said, I spoke one word. Live. 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 On tonight, if you don't get another doggone thing, the word of God is your spiritual CPR. On tonight, you got an assignment to live through it. Live through it, for there will be glory after this. There will be breakthroughs after this. There'll be a triumphant celebration after this. But you got to live through it. Live through it. I know you feel like you're about to lose your mind, but live through it. I know your heart's been broken, but live through it. I know you might have got a pink slip, but live through it. By the authority invested in me, I come to speak life to somebody's situation. I command you in the name of Jesus to live. I speak as Jesus spoke in the book of Mark chapter 5. He rolled up on a dead situation. The Dansmo was without life. But he said, Dansmo, arise. On tonight, arise from that place of frustration. Arise out of that place of lack. Arise out of that place of fear. Arise out of that place of stagnation for you shall survive you gonna survive you gonna live through it if the devil could have killed you he would have it was a good hit but it couldn't take you out it was a good hit it shook your faith but you're still standing you're still standing the word of the Lord declares in Acts chapter 17 Verse 28, he said, for in him we live, we move, and have our being. I'm not operating on my own strength. 
It's a greater force living on the inside of me. And it's in him that I live, move, and breathe, and have my being. Because if it would have been up to me, I would have cussed a Negro out. But in him, I live and move and have my being. If it would have been left up to Kendra, I would have caught a case. But in him, I live and move and breathe and have my being. You will survive. So I know you're weary and heavy laden, but the Lord wants to give you rest so you can live through it. Psalms 118 and 17 declares, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. You ought to make that thing personal. My finances shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord my hard headed children shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord my body shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord I don't care if they said it's renal failure my kidneys shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord if you got a heart condition I dare you to speak to your upper and right and lower chambers of heart and tell your heart I shall not I die but live to declare the works of the Lord you shall survive <laughs> Philippians 1 and 21 declares for me to live is Christ but for me to die is gain see at times the devil will try to sell you some wolf tickets but don't you buy them He'll sell you wolf tickets like fear and doubt and unbelief and have you listening to the statistic where you know so many thousands of people didn't die of this condition. You better speak life. He'll start speaking to you, say, you know, the companies is going under. The jobs is going to move overseas. You better not buy another wolf ticket, but you better speak life. I've been young, but now I'm old, but I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seen having to beg for bread. I shall survive. He'll come with that three count technique. One, you was hit with the diagnosis, hit with the disappointment. It shook your faith, but you got to say, uh uh. I will survive. It might have counted you out. Because see, you looked at the statistics and said millions didn't make it. But you got to say, you got to be the one to say, but I'm going to be the one who will. Where is your faith? If you have the faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can move any mountain in your life. Speak life. I will survive. So on tonight, I want to give you all a recipe that I call spiritual CPR. That perhaps if you're here and you're in a struggle and you need to know how to survive your struggle when you leave here, I got some principles for you. Ain't but three. See, uh, CPR is one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Then they take three breaths and that's it. I just believe that God is a three-dimensional God. He works in threes. So I just believe if Jesus went to the grave and he went down for three days, I might be in a struggle. But after three days, I'm coming out because I know him in the power of his resurrection. Honey, you might see the glory, but you don't know my story. I didn't been to hell. I made a decision like Jesus. I'm going to preach the gospel and resuscitate myself. You can't depend on nobody else when you're in a struggle you better know how to lean in Jesus put your trust in Jesus he'll make it all right let me give you the principles and number one if you gonna survive this here struggle the first thing you got to do is fear not somebody say fear not y'all can't be punking out to the devil if the greater one operates on the inside of you and you got the whole armor of God and the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword why are you losing your mind up in the doctor's office I know your humanity wrestles with your divinity but at some point in time whatever it is that you've been feeding the most is the one that's going to begin to flex a little bit so when you start flexing what the word says flexing the many man be in Christ flexing I got the armor on I'm armed and dangerous when you start flexing that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world you'll look at the doctor and say yeah doc I will survive 
fear not. Some of us, we can't flex because our faith has been contaminated by life. That we have become so worried. Our faith has malfunctioned that has left us spiritual paralyzed. That we're stuck. We're not equipped to move forward or move back. So we just stuck at the place that the doctors say. But whose report will you believe? Huh? Matthew 6 and 27 says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Now we know the Bible said God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. So that will lead me to believe, Miss Melanie, if God ain't give me fear, anytime I'm experiencing fear, that ain't of the devil. So if I'm allowing myself to stay in a place called fear, that means I have begun to entertain the devil's wolf tickets. So the scripture challenged me and said, Kendra, what can you do by staying up worrying? You can't add a cubit to your life. You can't change the situation. But when you just make a decision to put it in his hands and leave it alone, to cast your cares upon the Lord. See, when you operate in faith, fear ain't number faith that's been contaminated by ungodliness and unrighteousness and unbelief. But when you got some faith principles in action, you can go to sleep and rest easy, baby. Because you know God is in control of everything in the heavens of the earth. When you know who God is in your life you'll fear not see I ain't make this up Matthew 6 and 31 says therefore cuz I ain't gave you fear take no thought for what you shall eat what you gonna drink what you gonna be clothed with I ain't got to worry about that cuz I'm a tither and a giver he promised he obligated to rebuke the devourer for my sake so I ain't living in fear I ain't got to worry about this and that and the third because I am a chosen generation a peculiar people you are one too fear not see your heavenly father knows and he cares about our struggles he knows about that sickness he knows about that diagnosis. He knows about the finances. He knows about everything that you're going through. And because he knows and he cares, Ms. Roz, I'm so confident in this one thing. A whole lot of folk then told me some stuff that wasn't worth a hill of beans. But because of what he said, I'm confident in this one thing. That he who has begun a good work, he's going to complete the work. And because he promised it, I shall survive. Are you hearing me? So to deal with your fear, not only can you use the word of God to counteract the fear. Let me give you another little tip. Find you a song. Because sometimes just a song will begin to soothe your heart, will begin to eradicate the darkness in your mind, to begin to change and to shift your atmosphere for something supernatural to happen. Now, Reggie, I argue with myself about this next little nugget, but I got to give it to him anyway. So I was in a season of my life, Brother Tony, that I was in a struggle. And I said, God, this ain't right. After I was down there snotting and crying and all that, God was like, okay, when you get through, we can talk. See, we're all human. And we experience those fears and those agitations and irritations. But we got to know how to be strong in the Lord and in his power. So while I was in a dry place and I'm crying and having an emotional moment, I heard this song in my spirit. And Charles, she say, Gloria Gaynor. You know what I think about her? That's before your day. Gloria Gaynor, she said, Miss Arlene, at first I was afraid. I was petrified. Y'all know this. Come on, old school R&B singers. Don't leave me out here. But anyway, Gloria say, at first I was afraid. I was petrified. I don't know the rest of it, but the chorus is what spoke to me. It seemed like she was in a place in a struggle. She was afraid. She was petrified. But all of a sudden it was like, oh no, now I, I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll stay alive. Because I got all my life to live, and I got all my love to give. I will survive. 
I will survive. Hey, hey. See, sometimes you got to psych the devil out. You might not can't recall the scripture, but just begin to say, I will survive. Oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll stay alive. I got all my life to live. I got all my love to give. I will survive. I will survive. Hey, hey. You got to call a hey, hey on the devil. Say, hey, hey. Hold up. Wait a minute. Get that Kojic hey in your spirit. He said, hey, hey. I will survive. You got to call a call on the devil and say, oh, no, not I. I will survive. At first, I was afraid at the doctor's office. But oh, no, not I. I will survive. I was afraid when they walked out. But I got a flashback. Oh, no, not I. I will survive. You will survive. That's how you deal with fear. If you got to go old school, you give it to him, girl. You give the devil a black eye with the word of God, with your praise. And if you got to pull up Gloria Gaynor, I don't care what you got to do. The Bible said he'll take the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I will survive. Y'all sit down. So if you don't know nothing about Gloria Gaynor, look her up. Look her up. You can start off fearful. At first I was afraid. I was petrified. She started off in a whisper, but by the end of the song, she had some authority. That's how we have to start. It ain't how we start, but how we finish. You can start off sowing in tears, but the Bible said, in the end, you'll reap in joy. You will survive, baby. You will survive. Number two. Not only must you deal with your fear, secondly, you got to believe God. Somebody say believe God. Some of us have a form of godliness without any power. As evidenced by, we got trust issues. So what do I mean by that? Some of us have trust issues that root back to childhood. Root back to relationships that people told you things, made promises to you, but they never came through. And then now that you're a child of God in the kingdom of God, you believe that God going to bless everybody else, but it's hard for you to embrace and to believe that God wants to do this for you. And of course, the devil will try to make you think that you're not worthy. That what's ex what you're experiencing is because of something that you've done. But I come to cancel the assignment on the devil on tonight to let you know what you're experiencing ain't necessarily a result of something that you did wrong. It could be that you're doing something right. When you begin to, to lay aside some weights and begin to change your life for the will of God, there will be some persecution. There will be some trials. But I'm reminded that Psalms 34 and 19 declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord shall deliver you out of them all that's a promise baby that even if you go through the Bible says if you go to hell he'll be with you he promised never to leave you nor forsake you so if you gonna make it through this struggle you got to believe God believe that he loves you believe that he cares about you and believe that he forgave you now forgive yourself some of us can't believe God and receive what God has for us because we are living under condemnation. The scripture says there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So stop allowing other people's opinion, other people's lets down to hinder you from believing God. The scripture said, Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, I ain't talking about mama, daddy, pookie them. He said, if you believe in me, though you used to be dead, you shall live. You used to be a whoremonger, but because you believe in me, you gonna live. You used to drop it like it's hot, or lower it like it's lukewarm, but because you believe in me, you gonna live. You used to be on a fast track to hell, but because you believed in me, you know me in the power of my resurrection. You used to sell dope, but you believed in me. You used to, but look at you now. Are you hearing me? If you're going to make it through the struggle, 
you got to believe. You got to believe. Psalms 27 and 13. Y'all know David? He was a man after God's own heart. He messed up. He made some mistakes. But he said, Priscilla, I would have fainted. I would have gave up. I would have died in my struggle. Except I believe that I was going to see the goodness of the Lord. In your struggle, you got to believe you're going to see the goodness of the Lord. Y'all hearing me tonight? Mark 5 and 36 says, be not afraid, only believe. Luke 8 and 50 says, fear not, believe only and you'll be made whole. You believe in what the doctors say, believe what God say. By his stripes you're healed, that he healed all manner of sickness and disease. Believe God. Mark 9 and 23 says, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Let me pause right there to make sure y'all get this. All things are possible to him that believe. Some of us have a receiving issue because we don't believe. The word all is the inclusion of everything and the exclusion of nothing. If he told us no good thing will he withhold from you, it's all according to his will and he desires to bless you. He takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. He ain't taking pleasure in your struggle. That's why he said live because he wants to change your current situation for your good but his glory. All things are possible if you just believe. Mark 11 and 24 says whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe and you shall receive them. Do y'all see the prerequisite here? It ain't about if you got enough money to pray for favor. It ain't about who you know. If you just believe God, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. Can you just believe God? Darlene Bishop, when she came here several years ago for the women's conference, she had an acronym for believe. She said, because Emmanuel lives, I expect victory every time. Who is Emmanuel? I'm glad you asked. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the Great I Am, the Rose of Sharon, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, El Shaddai, whatever you need, that's Emmanuel. Because he lives, you can expect victory in everything in your life. So when you've dealt with your fears and you get your belief system on point, Miss Millie, that's when you can go through and say, uh uh, I will survive because I know he's gonna be doing exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. I will survive because he's gonna keep me from falling. I will survive. Why? Because he was wounded from my transgressions, bruised from my iniquities, and by stripes. I'm already here. You got to believe that you're gonna survive because wealth and riches is supposed to be in your house. And you ain't gonna owe no man nothing but to love them. You will survive. You got to believe that better is the ending of a thing than the beginning thereof believe that weeping has endured for long enough but your joy is going to come in the morning can somebody anybody say I still believe God when you really believe God you will walk like you believe God you will talk like you believe God. You will walk and profess like Psalms 34 and 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. When you know your God is big. When you know your God is mighty. When you know your God is strong. You will say, God, you're bigger than cancer. You're bigger than HIV. You're bigger than high blood pressure. You're bigger than gout. You're bigger than blood issues. You're bigger than any struggle in my life. What? What kind of God are you serving? You ain't serving Humpty Dumpty that sat on a wall and had a great fall. The God that we serve, he's the king of kings. Come on here. Believe God. When you believe God like that, you can go through anything and run through troops and leap over walls. You got to get your faith up, baby. Romans 8, 37 says, when you get that kind of faith, you will say nay in all these things. In the doctor's office, Terry, nay in all these things. Sitting in the bank, rejection, nay in all these things. Unfavorable phone call, nay in all these things. What is you talking about, Kendra? I'm glad you asked. 
Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, or principalities, or powers, nor things present, or things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor creatures shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So that sounds like, oh no, not I. I will survive. Nay, oh no, not I. I will survive. Y'all looking at me like that. Last but not least, number three, you got to say what you mean and mean what you say. We're going to take it home on this one. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Let's review my precious students at Monday Night Live. If you're going to survive the struggle, the first thing you got to do is what? Fear not. Number two, you got to do what? Believe God. Very good. Number three, say what you mean and mean what you say. Do you know Job 22 and 28 says, you can decree a thing and it shall be established. Huh? Proverbs 18 and 21 says, death and life is in the power of your tongue. You hold the pen of a ready writer in between your lips, baby. You can decree and declare what your life shall be. You can turn a situation around. According to Proverbs 21 and 1, that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. And like a water course, he'll turn it whether so ever he will. So could it be if you start minding your mouth and say what you mean and mean what you say, your struggle will be over. Are y'all hearing me? You can't be praying one minute, Kim. Oh, God, I thank you for healing my body. Oh, God, you are Jehovah Rapha. Oh, God, you're the greatest physician. Get on the phone. Girl, I'm sick as a dog. I'm about to die. Oh, child, my head is killing me. Angels is coming for your words. They don't know to come for the words that you was praying and snotting and travailing with all this traditional religious mess. Or if they need to come for your words. Girl, I'm sick as a dog. I'm about to die. My head is killing me. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Because death and life is in the power of your tongue. You speak life over that hard-headed child. You speak life over learning disabilities. You speak life over your valley of dry bones can these bones live Ezekiel it will if you speak life are y'all hearing me if you gonna survive the struggle you got to say what you mean and mean what you say God didn't waste his words just saying stuff you know what I'm saying in Genesis he said it said it said it Said it, said it, said it, then he did what? He saw it. If you was created in the image of God and greater works you should do than Jesus, what you waiting for? The devil done gave you locked jaw. You ain't got nothing to say. You say something if they bring your stuff up at the wrong price at Walmart. You say something if your paycheck is short. So when you going to start talking to the devil and let him know who you are and whose you are? Say what you mean and mean what you say, baby. So in closing, as I sit on down, you got to remember, when you start opening up your mouth, you could be giving the enemy ammunition to use against you. Let me read you your Miranda rights as I sit down. Everything that you say in the midst of your struggle can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney or one that will be appointed to you by the court of law. So let me tell you your greatest defense attorney. His name is Jesus. The moment the enemy tries to come up and bring up your issues, the blood says objection. My blood paid for that. So when you know you got the greatest defense attorney on your side, hush your mouth. Pray more and talk less. Because if you do that, baby, you will will survive. Your children will survive. Your home will survive. Your finances will survive. Fear not. Believe God. 
say what you mean and mean what you say. You got a promise. God wants to open up your grave. He wants to open up those places where you've been in a struggle, been in a drought. He said your struggle is over. But are you willing to deal with your fear? Are you willing to deal with your belief system? And are you willing to deal with your mouth? Last scripture, Ezekiel 37. Just receive it. Will you put it up on the screens if y'all can get it? I want them to really see this. This is the prophecy to you in your struggle. Ezekiel was a major prophet. He did a lot of major work speaking as the oracle of God. The scripture said in Ezekiel 37, verse 12 through 14. So this is the whole crust of the matter that this word is for somebody on tonight in a struggle. He said, therefore prophesy and say unto them thus said the Lord God behold O my people I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves Oh, my people, and brought you up out of your graves and put my spirit in you and ye shall live and ye shall live and you shall live. I don't care what the fear been telling you. You shall live. Then he said, and I'm going to place you in your own land and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Some of you haven't been able to trust people's words, but he wanted you to see this, to speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Deal with your fears. Deal with your belief system and say what you mean and mean what you say. And you will. You will. You shall survive. So we're closing on tonight. I just want to pray a blessing over you all who are here. So God, we thank you for those who are here on tonight. Perhaps those who have been in a struggle, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Some old God in our midst may have struggled to the point that they didn't feel like they could even tell anybody because they didn't want to be perceived as not having faith. So God, we send your word now to that place of struggle. We ask.